issues surrounding rig design can be reasonably complex or simple, but the one thing they certainly are not in Rigit is completely fixed in any way. One of the things that many users will wonder when starting out with Rigit, and especially when using the modular parts of Rigit, is how to go about actually building your rig in a way that's going to work the best, make the most sense or provide the easiest animation. The simple answer to this is that there isn't always a set way to do things. There is quite a lot of freedom in how you can structure your rig and consequently how you can create the kinds of systems and setups that best serve the needs of your animation and your own animation style. For instance, let's just add a pair of legs here to our main route, and let's also just throw in a basic spine there. So here we have the beginnings of what would be an ordinary human style biped character. We move it along, it walks, does whatever, and so on. Now, one of the things that occurs during the walk cycle is that the hip tips from side to side. We have this swing in our hips. If I've created my rig like this, then of course I put the swing on the hips just here on the main root item. Now that's perfectly fine and functional, but what we can see straight away is of course because the spine is also a child of the main root item, that it is tipping side to side as well. Obviously, we don't often walk swinging around side to side like this. Maybe we do if we're a cartoon character, but maybe not if we're a more realistic character. As such, if this is how you have structured your rig, then you would need to perform counter animation on the spine against the action of this main root swing. We could perhaps deal with this by using the IK system on the spine. Ordinarily, the IK goal for a spine system is the child of the actual spine system root itself. But we could, of course, choose to parent that out, as we see in the spines videos. And now we can put the swing on the main root like this, and we see that the spine somewhat automatically counter animates itself in response to the movement of the main root as it reaches for its goal. We are further able to do additional rotations onto our spine from the spine IK goal like this, if we so desire. So that's one way of structuring and designing a rig. With the spine back in FK mode, let's have a look at another option. We'll get rid of these legs, and I'm going to add a hips root to this rig, which will be a child of the main root here. There it is in place, just a simple single item. I'm going to re-add another pair of legs, and I will make these children of the hips root. Now what we have is this system that, of course, still moves around using the main root, but we have this hips root item which we can swing to get the swing in our hips during walk cycles or other such motions, of course, independently of the upper body. We're not having to counter-animate the spine. As we've seen along the way in the parenting video where we talked about the location of the pole items, in the spines video, as we saw here, the location of the IK goal for a spine, in choices in how we place things like hips roots as the parents for subsequent parts in order to break apart hierarchies and isolate different systems from one another, these are all aspects of the rig design. And there's a myriad of ways in which you can put things together to make systems that work differently for yourself. Unfortunately, there is no hard, fast, simple answer for this type of character, do it this way, for that type, do it another way. If you do look through the presets, you can of course study how those are built, and those will give you some ideas for what might be good situations for certain character types in certain situations. But you certainly should play and experiment for yourselves and try to think your way through your own rig design on a character by character basis. When it comes to performing animation, there are probably as many animation styles as there are animators. And so trying to design the rig that best fits the animation workflow you desire to use will help you immensely. There are even other things that may not be so obvious. For instance, we'll look again at the IK system for the legs here. What we see by default, of course, is that we have this main IK null, which is just rested on the ground and is supposed to represent the character's foot sole. Other actions of the foot system that we have created take place within this IK goal space. And this whole reverse foot setup does provide a very fast and efficient way to work with foot animation. However, not every user is comfortable 
using this kind of a system. But how can you modify it? Well, in a truly mechanical way, you sort of can't. But in terms of where things are placed and pivot from, you can. The good old school way of having a foot and leg set up before people started doing these fancy reverse foot rigs was simply to have a goal here at the ankle position and you would move the leg in IK and rotate the foot from that single point. And we can do this with Rigget. Let's go back into fitting mode here. And what we have is the foot sole marker. Normally, of course, placed under the foot sole. But here, I'm going to take it and snap it on to the ankle position there. I do, of course, have all of these extra nulls here, which mark out the different contact points at the plane of the foot. So you can move those down. Notice that by default they are locked on their Y, but you can unlock them and position them back down at the sole point, wherever that might happen to be. Here's our reverse foot null, remember? Let's just put that there somewhere like this temporarily for now. And what we see when we come back into rig mode is that, of course, our main IK null is here now at the ankle position. But because it's the master of the entire IK system, not only can we pose it in position like this to position the leg where we want it, but we can also rotate the whole foot from this point. Of course, we still have the option to start using all of the fancy reverse foot stuff as well, if we want to. But perhaps we didn't. Perhaps we wanted to go to a really, really simple foot system. That's fine. Let's pop open the rigging toolbox here. I'm going to take both of these IK controllers for the legs there. And I'll set these guys to be ball style controls like this. I'll take the IK actual and these contact points at the heel and tiptoe there. I'm going to set those to non-shape because in this instance we're going to say that we're not using them at all. I'm just quickly going to go back into fitting mode, find my reverse foot controller and snap that down here at the toes position. Come back into fitting mode and what we see we now have is a foot set up where we've got this single IK goal at the ankle there that we can pivot around to place the foot and of course to turn the toe we just grab this controller and operate it on pitch which gives us our toe action there. Of course all of the other stuff is still present so if I were to be doing actions on the foot reverse controller like this then that stuff would start happening but if I weren't wanting that I could have just of course come on start locking off those channels that were no longer relevant to the way I wish to use the rig and we see that we've got a really simple IK leg and foot setup which is more commonplace in the old school style and which some animators may prefer. So do experiment, do play around and do try things out. Some things may not work, others may surprise you. But in all circumstances, you will find that Rigit allows you an awful lot of leeway in designing rigs in the ways that you really want them to work.